back hello there welcome once more to grand choice kitchen and if this is your first time stopping by i would like to say a very warm welcome to you join me as we prepare hausa cocoa from scratch this is ghana's most popular breakfast meal very very common on all streets of ghana and i know you are going to love this just look at how good it is so to start i have my millets this is the actual grain so it is dried i'm going to wash it first and then i'm going to soak it overnight Typically the good grain stays on the bottom of your bowl and then the not so good ones, the not so wholesome grains would be the ones that float on the surface. So I'm going to strain this and then give my grains a very very good rinse. Yeah, so mostly all that is going is really not good grain so it needs to go for you to get your very good ones. I'm going to transfer my grains into a strainer. This has very little holes. The holes are quite tiny, so they are not going to slide through because as you can see, the millet grains themselves are also small. I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly how long you should wash your grain because it depends on how dirty they come. I'm just trying to make sure that my water that comes out of it runs clear. So now that I feel like it's thoroughly washed, I'm going to transfer it back into my bowl, rinse out my strainer or colander just so that all the grains that are stuck in there will go back into the bowl. Then I'm going to fill it with water. So I see a few particles coming back onto the surface of my water and I'm going to just strain that as well. I'm really trying to get only the good grains in my cocoa. So just strain that out and then I'm going to fill it with more water. At this point, I'm very much assured that my grains are very clean, so I'm going to just fill it my bowl with water, set it on my countertop overnight, and let it just soak so it's going to help the grains soften up and swell. So I set that aside for a whole day, so one morning to the next morning, and the next morning you can see these bubbles forming on the surface of my millet that is showing you that some fermentation has occurred. The grains have swollen, so my bowl is almost full at this point. And now I'm just going to rinse my uh, millet one more time just to get off that fermentation that is in the water, all these bubbles. And then I'm going to transfer my dry grains into another bowl and get it ready for blending. So I rinsed off my grains and I still added some water to it in the bowl. This is going to help me to be able to get rid of any gravel, stones or any other particles that are heavier than my grain. They will all settle on the bottom of my uh, bowl so they don't get into my grain. You don't want your porridge to end up being sandy. So you swirl it and then once you scoop it, you also look through what is in your palm. Make sure that you don't have any foreign uh, parts or particles in there. And then you transfer it into your bowl that you are using to collect. And on the bottom, trust me, there's always a lot of gravel and you don't want that in your porridge. So at this point, I'm really looking through making sure that whatever I have in my palm has no gravels in it. And the very bottom of the bowl, even though my grains are very clean, you see all that, all that brown is gravel. And if I had just strained it and then just put it in a bowl to blend, I would have ended up blending all this into my porridge. So I think I've pretty much done enough work trying to clean this and I didn't want to waste my time with this. Some days I actually do and try to collect them, but this is good. I'm going to cut up my ginger and add all my other ingredients. And of course, everything is going to be listed for you in the description box. So I have some peppercorns in here, some uh, dried chilies. I've, I have some cloves in here now as well. I'm going to add my huintia or negro peppers. And my ginger, I cut them up a little bit so it will be easier to blend. In my previous Hausa Coco video, I did not add any peppercorns to my ingredients. I've never seen my mom put peppercorns. I've always meant to ask her when I talk to her, but I always forget. So maybe she will see this and say something to me next time we talk. But I've really never seen her put it in. I did put it in here this time around. And to be honest, I did not really taste any difference in there, but... 
of course that is how it is made and if we are going to be teaching or trying to share i should say then of course i would want to do it the way it is expected to be done and by peppercorns i mean black pepper or estrovisa so i'm blending half of the quantity of my ingredients because this is actually six cups of millet that i have in here and splitting it is the best way for me to be able to get it all done it wouldn't have fit in my blender anyway so i've blended it with all that water that covered it and for it to be easier for me to strain i'm adding more water and then just blend through it a little bit not all the way through but just so everything is mixed up and then i'm going to pour it into a strainer to strain so this is quite a fine strainer, not the very finest, but it's fine enough that it is going to make sure that most of the residue is not transferred into my bowl. But I'm going to also strain this again with a nut milk bag when I'm done. I'm just going to make sure that all this is done, all strained, and then I'll blend the rest of my ingredients and then we'll proceed after that. Pretty much almost all my juice from my blended millet in my bowl now and I'm just adding some clean water to this this is going to help rinse it out more so that all that creaminess the milkiness out of the ingredients will really go into the bowl as expected so I have just the residue or the chaff you want to make sure that you get as much of your good juice off your millet as possible especially over here you know this is so hard to get that six cup is all that I received. And so I'm going to make sure that I have the best, like as much of my uh, porridge out of it as I can get. So I'm just going to go this way using the back of my spatula to actually just press on it so that I get all that milk or juice out. You know, you want it to be as white, as clean and clear as possible. And at this point, it still has a little bit of juice in there. So I'm just going to rinse out my blender and use that, pour that over here and then use it to even rinse it out the more. Don't worry about your porridge becoming or your mixture getting too watery. Remember, you are going to let this sit another night or overnight and all that water is going to settle anyway and your actual ingredient is going to settle on the bottom. You don't want to overdo it, but as much as possible, you also want to make sure that you get as much out of it, get your money's worth. So I pour the water in here and now as you can see, what is what is left in the strainer is very little because I've been able to rinse out a lot of the goodness even though it's still it's going to have some residue because I'm going to strain it through a nut milk bag. At this point, I'm very satisfied with what I've done. And it looks like, you know, my chaff here is pretty clear. Almost all that juice is out. And I think at this point, I'm content to just set it aside and then blend the other batch or the second half of my millets and uh, dried ingredients. Look at that, right? I did a good job. So set that aside and I'm going to focus on the rest. So I'm blending this and I'm going to repeat the same process until I get my milk and then we are going to use the nut milk bag to strain. <laughs> So here's my two bowls of millet that I have strained the very first time and now I'm going to run it through a nut milk bag just to make sure that it has all that smoothness that the typical house of cocoa sellers have it. I'm using a nut milk bag but you can use a uh, nylon cloth or anything that will help you to be able to strain but it has to be something clean of course. I have tried to fit part of the nut milk bag on the lip of my container just so that it doesn't slide off which sometimes can be very tricky and I'm going to pour my milk in here. I'm calling this my milk because typically if it was a nut milk or anything, you know, whatever you get now is considered a milk. So my juice, if that makes it any better. And yes, I don't know. I just overdid it. I poured too much in here. So 
yes, bringing it out was a challenge. And I'm like, how am I going to be able to squeeze out my juice when I have this big sack? <laughs> so I fumbled with it a little bit and I'm going to end up, you know, I realized it's not going to work. So I'm going to transfer this into a bowl and use that bowl to rather be the one to catch the juice when it comes out. That was the only way I could do it. Don't be like me, please. Do this in little batches if you are going to use a nut milk bag or even if you are using a nylon cloth as typically used. If you made this much of cocoa, don't be lazy and save yourself a little bit of stress. This was like, ooh, <laughs> for me. Ooh, I gave myself a headache for sure. So I have it in a bowl now, much easier. I have more room to wiggle around and I'm tying the end of my nut milk bag so that nothing seeps out of it because it can happen and then you defeat the whole purpose. You have to rinse out the bag, empty it out, rinse it, I mean, and then start all over again. So I've tied it to save myself that grief. I've had enough stress trying to do this at this point and I'm just going to be squeezing it gradually until as much of the juice comes out and then it's going to be a lot easier for me to squeeze it out just like this at this point it is almost all dry almost no juice in there so it's easy for me to twist it squeeze it like I'm squeezing out my laundry you know I'm not playing I want to make sure that I have as much of my milk as possible and look so this of course you can see is not as clear as what I did when I used the strainer so this still has a lot of milk I'm going to pour that into a container set it aside I'm going to rinse it out again and now the milk that I've extracted so far I've been catching into this container so it went into the container and I went ahead to strain the contents of the other bowl which I had pre uh, strained remember I had two bowls so this is the second one that I'm working on now and once I'm done I'm going to add that into the bowl yes and whatever is in that milk nuts milk bag wait for it I'm going to strain it again so I have almost six liters this is approximately like almost exactly six liters of milk here now i'm going to cover this and this is going to settle down trust me it looks like it's all oh, her porridge is going to be watery but remember it is going to settle and you have your actual uh porridge or the dough the mixture is going to be all the way in the bottom and everything else is going to be water almost like the way so i'm going to set that aside now and whatever was in my nut milk bag, I'm going to just pour some clear water onto this. And that is going to help me to extract all the goodness out of it. Because like you see, this is just like the other one. It is very creamy, so I'm not going to let it go waste. I'm going to actually just rinse it out with clear water. This is clean water you saw me pour in here. Now watch how it's going to turn so milky and good and how much is going to be remaining in the nuts milk bag after I try to get everything out. So no, we're not gonna waste it. This was enough actually to make porridge for me and my husband another time when I wanted to make porridge. So no, that couldn't have gone in the trash at all. And now I'm going to just break this out, really squeeze it out because I think I have all the goodness. And if you were paying attention, you can see that uh, the quantity in there has drastically reduced because I've got a lot of that milk coming out of that water. Yep. Squeeze it out as much as you can. We're not wasting anything. Yes, this is going to be a lengthy video, I know, but... I really wanted you to see how much you can get out of this if you give it a little bit of time. And so now look, much clearer, right? It is a little bit, you see a little bit more darker grains than it was. First, it had a lot more milk on it, so it wasn't that clear. I'm going to cover this as well and set it aside overnight as well with everything else and the next day you see that it also settles. So there it is, it has settled. I have some good stuff on the bottom. And, but we're going to focus on this one in this six liter container. I'm going to bring that over. So it is the next morning. I'm super excited to have my porridge. And as you can see, out of the six liters of milk that we had, four of it has settled. So sedimentation has taken place and four liters out of the six is almost all water. And we have the two liters on the bottom being uh, the actual uh, cocoa or the porridge base that we are going to use 
but of course one thing that i also learned from my previous video is that you don't waste the water i got a lot of comments on that so the juice i'm going to pour out this is the liquid i'm going to be using part of it to make my porridge so i've measured out some of it here and i'm going to pour it into my pot that i'm going to actually make the porridge in and this i'll bring to a boil so one thing i realized of course is that it is so wise to use your water to make your porridge because it has all that spice in it it has a little bit of that fermentation in there so it just makes your porridge taste a lot you know better it's more spicy and everything else and so that is one thing that i took from that and i'm so happy to be able to pick that and so i'm actually trying to scoop some of the thick bottom part of my porridge so that is out of that two liters that i have i still have a lot of liquid but i'm trying to reach for the bottom so the thick part here you see sometimes it settles you have a little bit of whiteness to it you want to stir so you are not getting only the white part you want to have a beautiful mixture uh, every time you make your porridge so to that i'm going to add some of that same juice that is at the top of the container that i poured on the side mix it up and let it sit on the side whilst I wait for my water to boil. So quickly, let me show you how I store my paste. So this is the, the, the bottom part of my mixture. So the actual cocoa, I put them into little containers like this. One of them is enough to make porridge for my family cover and freeze. And I bring one out when I need it. So my water is boiling. Now I'm going to just add my mixture in here now and be stirring as I pour it in. I actually turned the flame off before I started doing this so there's no heat at the base of my fire. I'm just going to make sure that it's thick enough so I'm just going to stir it a little bit, cover it and then it's just going to use the residual heat to cook up a little bit more and that is pretty much it. But sometimes when I bring my dough out of the freezer, I must say I just let the heat be on the bottom of my pan until I'm done pouring everything in and stirring and then turn it off. I still don't let it boil over. And just look at this. Your cocoa is ready and we are doing it. I just out. Just transporting ourselves onto the streets of Ghana. Yes, my mimi to cocoa, five CDs. And yes, situate whatever. Okay, upa situate say, upa set three move. So there we are. I'm going to put some sugar here and that is how simple it is i hope you took something from this because i learned a lot from sharing something with you and learning a lot from people who this meal actually originates from so it is a learning process and i hope you took something from this so if you want your porridge with no milk or anything then you're ready to go but if you are team milk like me then you're going to put some of your milk in there as well and I also have some kose here because you know cocoa and kose or some tea bread there that is how we do it and I like the little pieces of my kose to go in my porridge so yes I'm going to do that I have some granite here as well so I have all the works I love kose but these little pieces that form out of it I love it even more. I call it the croutons of my cocoa. So good. Please help me get this video to a wider audience by liking and sharing. And please comment as well. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving, be kind, be happy.